All right, so uh, let's head on to the markets now. We have uh, any John McCoy with the details, and uh, any uh, I guess you can celebrate now. There's no uh, default. <laughs> no risk of default. Yes, Nigeria <laughs> yeah, has I, not I think, uh, yes. defaulted uh, in our China loans. Yeah, that's that's obligation. good to know. But as um, Sony has says, uh, the issue of revenue is what the country should actually be looking at. Uh, uh, I think uh, yesterday also we spoke to the NEPC. A CEO who is in China for trade house uh, launch and commissioning and all of this is supposed to boost especially non-oil uh, exports to increase our revenue and help us deal with our debts. I, I guess that's the because if picture. the revenue match the debt they won't be talking about yeah, this. Even a lot of point. people have said we don't have a problem of uh, debts or spending. It's a problem of revenue, revenue. we have. If we are able to meet up with what we are supposed to we can just, I mean, even if it's 10% of our potential, we keep saying potential in Nigeria, potential in agriculture culture potential in uh, uh, mineral so resources, you understand? <laughs> uh, I, I guess that we will not be talking about uh, debt and the, and the risk of defaults at the end of the day. But very sensitive period globally, talking about yes, debt levels. Is. Yes, it yeah. is. All right, let's look at the market numbers now. And what we see is that uh, the equities closed in the positive yesterday uh, at 0.08% up, even though we are still at 51,000, and equity cap at 27 0.87 trillion naira. I know that our major focus today is actually not on the market. Market, it's more on um, well something a bit different. But let's let's look at the next slide there and and see. Yeah, there you see banking recovered yesterday thanks to UBA. A lot of the figures, like three of the figures, made it back up yesterday. Consumer goods had PZ. Uh, are right there and that's why we see this positive insurance is also back oil and gas however is one area that we are supposed to look at because it ended in the uh, uh, red yesterday but now we are talking about something a bit different we're talking about um, the ETF listing by the Nigeria Capital Market and we have joining us for that conversation uh, the Mr. Jude Chiemeka Divisional Head Capital Markets to tell us about about this ETF and what uh, NGX wants to do with do with it. Good morning, Mr. Chemeka. Uh, so tell us about this uh, ETF. What is about the listing and how it's supposed to affect me and my pockets? All right. Good morning. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. All right. Thanks for having us as always. Um, so the ETF market. Um, is one of those instruments that investors can actually use to, to try and uh, enhance the performance of their portfolios, especially institutional investors as well as retail investors. Um, so exchange traded funds, as they're called, uh, it's just a basket of securities uh, that forms an aligning assets uh, that are listed on the exchange, and they trade pretty much in line with the other uh, equity base uh, or fixed income base instruments that are listed on exchange, driven largely by demand and supply. Uh, so this instrument has grown over the years. Uh, we do have like 12 ETFs that are listed on our exchange. Uh, 10 of them are equity based. We do have one fixed income base and also commodity base, which really helps as an alternative assets class for investors looking to diversify their portfolios. So the ETF Clearly, uh, it's one of those instruments that have really gained traction. Uh, I think the first ETF traded uh, in 1990 uh, in Canada, and since then it's grown uh, in terms of adoptions globally. It's also important to point out that what we have seen uh, is that since 20, 2003, ETFs have really grown phenomenally from 276 to over seven eight thousand seven hundred and fifty four ETLs in the global space. So it's one of those assets that have grown significantly in the international uh, money space and is beginning to gain traction and momentum in the Nigerian capital markets. So so what advantage do, does this uh, ETF, what, what does it bring on board uh, compared to other avenues, the money markets and all of that? What advantage does it have? And these four listings, what, what do they bring? Great. So the ETF as an instrument, like I said earlier, just helps to diversify uh, investment risk for, for investors, largely because it's a basket. And so areas such as uh, where an investor is buying a particular security, 
And so the investor is left with the volatility associated with that security. But for an ETL, it's typically a basket of various securities that are formed on aligning assets. And so investors are able to manage their risk better. They are also able to get better returns uh, for their portfolios. For instance, I mean, year to date, we've seen the OSHA index struggle uh, to be in the green territory, largely because of the increased uh, NPR that's at 18%. So that's usually uh, stress for the equities market. But you can see that some of the ETFs that we have listed, uh, despite this, have been able to return uh, close to 30%, in some cases, uh, 20%. And that is largely because it's a basket of various underlying securities. So the volatility associated with one security does not impact the entire portfolio. So investors are able to manage their risks better. And also, they're able to invest at a much lower cost. For instance, the underlying assets, uh, you have to invest in five securities to manage your risk, you're better off buying an ETF at a much lower cost. So the cost of participating an ETF helps also to manage the performance of the portfolio in the long run. But more importantly, I think for retail investors, it's just something that they need to pay attention to because I think the major challenge has always been investor education. A lot of uh, retail investors who typically prefer to hold on to individual assets. Uh, but for what we have seen, even in the global space, the, you tend to get more returns by diversifying your risk in, by investing in ETL since it gives you that opportunity, not just to lower your cost of entry, but also to help diversify um, your portfolio. And if there's adverse uh, situation in one particular security, but it doesn't then impact the entire security that you have in your portfolio. So I think that the main advantage that you can see, even from the, the, the number we have in Nigeria, is that it is growing. Uh, and I thank you for, for highlighting this asset class. For investors really need to understand it, that it's better if you're thinking about the overall return of your portfolio to start thinking about using ETFs instead of going straight and just buying the underlying assets individually. Mm. So uh, we understand the part of diversifying the risks, but some people would say, wouldn't that make my profits also thin out uh, instead of having a bulk profit from a singular stock, you know, then I, I lose it because perhaps I had diversified to five and so I don't get as much profit as I, I should have. Well, I mean, the statistics don't show that. I mean, it's interesting to, 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 to go with that argument, but if you look at last year, the offshore index is on about 20%, uh, which is really one of the leading uh, exchanges uh, return that you find globally. However, the, we had ETLs that return over 203%. So for an investor, if you're really thinking about returning uh, returns on your investment, you really need to pay attention to the ETL space. Uh, we had a new goal ETL, which is really an alternative asset class, return over 30% last year. So it's important for investors to really begin to think about returns on their investments as opposed to being sentimental uh, in holding on to names of, of companies that they are originally used to uh, holding. It's just to look at it again from a mm. different lens to understand that as an investor, return on your investment is key. And one of the ways to enhance that is to make sure that you have ETLs along the various asset classes that you're holding. All right. Uh, now you have the yeah. fixed income space returning quite a bit, but you do have fixed income ETFs yes, that will do. allow okay. you to hold several fixed okay. income instruments, and your and the fate of your return will be based on the overall, as opposed to just one uh, entity. That All right. All right, Mister Chemeka. I just, Mr. I just need to get this in uh, and we'll make it briefly because it's, it's, it's time for the other market. The issue of technology. So even when we have these beautiful ideas and attractive highlights and profits and all of that, getting into the market sometimes is being discouraged because of the lack of or um, lack of enough technology is what I meant to say. So it's all the bureaucracy and paperwork discourages especially the youth from getting into the market. What are you doing about that? Thank you for that. Uh, to be honest, the exchange has invested significantly in technology. Uh, we looked at the fourth industrial revolution even before COVID came. We had 
uh, instituted minimum operating standards and of course our trading license holders to adopt uh, significant and make significant investment in technology as well. And so today in our market, uh, while brokers are able to trade by the BPA without necessarily coming to the floor, we've done that significantly well without a down day. Uh, and that shows the commitment to technology. So from an NGX perspective, we'll continue to invest in technology. We'll continue to enhance access to markets. We do have all kinds of touch points uh, that will allow investors access to our market, market data, to ensure that they're able to invest as at when they want to in the manner that they want to do so. And so um, technology as a challenge for the market, to, to be honest, is what one is looking at in the past. But for the less of where there's changes and where we're going, technology will help to enhance market efficiency, market access, and better return for investors. And that is really what we're committed to doing at the exchange. All right, so Mr. Jude Chemeka, Divisional Head, Capital Market at the NJF. Thank you so much for your time.